On most nights, you can hear me patrolling at one of the local schools that I guard in rotations. It's an okay job, I guess. I don't mind working the graveyard shift. In fact, I prefer it. I worked third shift at a radio station in town for years, making pretty decent money before they started laying people off. After that, I tried to get a hold of a job during the hours of living, but... Well, switching back to days seemed about as awkward as it did when I first started doing nights. So I quit. I picked up the first sleeper shift that I could find. When people ask me how I do it, which isn't often, as I don't talk to too many people anymore, I say something like, It's peaceful being up here when the rest of the town is asleep, or I just like a little solitude. But if I was being honest, I just like to listen to the radio. Nighttime radio is something special. Those of you who regularly partake in this nocturnal pastime know exactly what I'm talking about. Shows like Coast to Coast AM is like a cult in a lot of ways of how dedicated its listeners are. I prefer local radio, though. This is Banjo. Keep strumming! <laughs> That's a great guy. I bounce around a station in my little radio for most of the night until 2.14 hits. I want to get to the show early because 2.15... That's when the numbers start. From the usual pervasive silence of 87.7 comes a voice, sweet, staccato, concise. One by one, the voice goes down her list of seemingly endless numbers. Sounds so strange, but plenty of number junkies do the same thing with their own favorite number station. Some people think the numbers relay encoded messages for the government or aliens or something. Those types get all hot and bothered when they think that they have deciphered part of the message. And whatever, maybe they're on to something. If the government or aliens uh, don't want me to listen to their mysterious pillow talk, I think it's best not to put my nose where it doesn't belong. I heard once from a trucker buddy of mine that a trucker buddy of his basically disappeared into thin air after posting something online about his local number station. I just want the numbers, though. No codes, no aliens, just numbers. Cadence and tone, or repetition... Apparent randomness flicks a switch in my brain and cuts out all the usual chatter. I listen to the numbers for hours on end, skulking around the halls and wandering in and out of classrooms, but it barely feels like any time has passed at all once I finally snap out of the trance to realize my watch is done. If it's warm outside and I've finished up early, I'll sit out in the parking lot and smoke a roach with the numbers. Then, without warning, the voice will pause. A tone similar to the sound of a dead telephone line will play, and she returns to sign off for the night. 87.7, .7, she says. Then the silence returns. Just like me. Sometimes the numbers finish their work early. She never works any later than 5 a.m. When she's gone, I always feel a little ping of loneliness, like pressing on a fresh bruise. Most late-night hosts at least say goodbye. And, and that might be why I return night after night, to satiate that feeling like something's been left unresolved. On the bike ride back to my apartment, I chant some of the strings of digits that I can remember from the night show. I shower, and the numbers start to jumble and fade. By the time I fall asleep, I can barely make out the difference between a three and an eight. Until two nights ago. It was how my life proceeded for almost a year. The beginning of the night was as unassuming and monotonous as all the previous nights before. It's Banjo! Who do I got on the line? 214. Click. I wait. 215. And the radio is as silent as a grave. I notice the change in form almost immediately, but honestly, I figure that I'm just. I'm just high. Turn to the wrong station. Click. Banjo! Click. Still silent. I check the dial and the needle's resting right where it always has been. 2.15. 87.7 is nothing but dead air. Probably shouldn't have wigged out as much as I did, but just imagine how you'd feel if your favorite television show got cancelled. Without warning, right in the middle of a season. I'm not going to lie, I teared up a little bit. For an hour or so, I continued cleaning to the tune of 87.7 .7 silence. I can't take it anymore, eventually. And I switch back to Banjo. Everything he says feels so synthetic, suddenly. His laughs and quips are the same, but they seem so disingenuous. 
I hate it, but I keep listening. I stick with it like a dog eating its own vomit. I don't shower that night and I don't sleep. Something feels wrong in my bones in a way that keeps me restless to the point of pacing. I oscillate between feeling like an idiot and feeling nothing. Just wanted to say goodbye, just get a little closure, you know. You don't just pull the plug on someone without saying goodbye. It's not fair to anyone involved in the afternoon. I try to post something online on a number junkie forum, but everything I can get out sounds so damn stupid. I finally scrap all my dearly beloved eulogies when the embarrassment gets a little too palpable. I think about skipping out of my shift that night. I'm too scared to be hanging around idle without the numbers there. Banjo chats with some folks from Missouri as I bike through the patches of streetlights towards the school. I decided to clean up the closest one to me because I was already exhausted. That particular building was the least hassle to get into. The supply closet out back that leads into the rest of the school is always unlocked, so I don't need to fuss with opening windows or anything. Sounds like things are just falling apart out there, says Banjo. I open one of the classroom doors and pace for a while. Oh, we're just hanging out by a thread some days, says the Missouri folks. They don't seem interested in banter at all. Well, if you ever do need someone to chat with, just pick up the phone and call old Banjo. The halls feel like a crypt that night. Maybe a morgue. Things are just too tidy, too sterile. Chalkboards are clean, chairs are pushed into the desks, the books in the library are carefully staged on their shelves like actors ready for opening night. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but books are still pretty frequently banned in a lot of schools around the United States. Catcher in the Rye was banned for almost two decades nationwide. Censorship is a ba- Bleeps Banjo. Whoops, <laughs> gotta keep the FCC off our trail. One of Banjo's classic stings hits the airwaves, followed by the sound of pots and pans tumbling over one another. I laugh to myself. He's a really funny guy. I'm making my rounds in the school gym when 210 rolls around. It's basically pitch black in there. When all the lights are out, and the slightest sound bounces off the hardwood floors and clatters around the rafters like a spooked animal. It just might be my favorite place in the world. I turn to 87.7. If she comes back, I want to hear her loud and clear. I want to close my eyes and pretend that we're in an amphitheater together. Just the two of us. In the silence, everything is frozen except time. The minutes tick away. 2.11. 2.12. 2.13. It is, in a way, its own number station, constantly playing, even if no one's listening. 22. 25. 4. 89. 13. 64. 99, 17, 21, 40, 16, 32. She resumes. And it is a symphony. The rush of dopamine that crashes into my brain is almost too much to handle at first, but something pins me down. A sniffle. The voice which it had almost been so lifeless, robotic even, periodically caught her breath through short sniffles. The gymnasium is drowning in numbers that progressively begin to quiver, sickly. 77. 3. A whimper stops the flow of digits. The code, had there ever been one, was broken. It, it was incomplete, a farce. When you peel away the skin of... of Artifice from a masterpiece, the guts might just spill out. I really, I really don't know if I can do this anymore, she says. Can I take a break? Just one more night? There's a crack. A fracture in the air and in my ears. 87. Four. Please. Static shrieks from the radio. It claws up the walls and leaves behind a dissonant hum. She's crying now. From small peeps of sadness come long, sorrowful moans. I want to say something, 
she spits out between breaths. But I know you'd be angry. The radio crackles so hard. I'm worried it might shatter. You're strumming with the... B- You're strumming with ba 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 banjo Who is this? What? She asks in an ear whisper. You're on the line with... A pregnant pause is broken by a banjo lick. Banjo! You can hear me? A candid laughter track dances in the room. Well, I'm not talking to myself, am I? <laughs> Another roar of synthetic laughter erupts from the box. You might be. Benja's laughing so hard, he can barely breathe. Got a real joker here, folks. Sounds like somebody's plucking my strings. <laughs> the radio distorts his voice into a deep baritone. I don't want to do the numbers anymore, she screeches. They're they're driving me crazy. Oh, you definitely sound a little crazy to me, rumbles Banjo over a cuckoo clock sound effect. Listen, listen, they don't mean anything. They're they're just fucking numbers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down with the language. (laughs) I don't want to lose my job here. It's the only thing I got. His laughs gurgle in his chest. I need help. I'm stuck in here. There's nothing means anything anymore, and I just, I, I don't know what to do anymore. Three, three, fifty, forty-nine. See, they're just random numbers. They're just distractions. They sure sound pretty, though. Music to my ears. How about we get a couple more on? No, no more numbers. How about just one? See. Easy. Just. One. No. No, no, no more, no more numbers. Just. One. I'm not doing the fucking numbers anymore. Never do a single, a single. One. The police found me unconscious and (laughs) half-naked, curled underneath a stack of metal bleaches, supposedly. They put together most of the story before I was even awake. I spent the entire next evening in the hospital. When I asked if I could listen to the radio, even the doctors laughed. That night, whether, whether from pity or cruelty, an officer dropped a newspaper in my lap. A picture of me in handcuffs is plastered on the front page. Blah, 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 title. Strings snapped on strung out... Banjo. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you a great big thank you for watching tonight's video. I'm also going to tell you about one more thing because I want to be a good husband. My wife's tea shop is open again. If anybody had missed out on your chance before to order her mixed herbal tea blends, then now's your chance. And she's putting out some new Dungeons and Dragons themed tea now that it's open. It's what she does. She does mixed Dungeons and Dragons teas. The tea shop is etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea. And uh, yeah, I I hope you guys enjoy that or want to check her out because she's cool. And Susie from the Game Grumps even got stuff from her. So it's people like it. I want to give an extra big thank you to Tyler Ramberg, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, really hope I said that okay, the Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Melissa Swagart, Chimpinski, Dante Rao, the Ginger Bros, Andreas Solvik, and Andrew Steinberg. Stenberg? Stenberg. Andrew Stenberg. You guys are those amazing patrons who have been supporting the channel on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and I owe you guys big time for helping me keep the lights on. In fact, I owe all of you guys who watch or listen to Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube or on the podcast. If you guys would like to get the stories first, then you can always check me out at youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta and subscribe. Or if you guys like listening on the mobile, then our podcast is also available on Spotify, Google, and iTunes. Thanks so much, kids, and sweet dreams.